What's up guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going through some weird times right now, as you all know. And San Francisco and the surrounding counties uh, just issued this shelter in place. So technically we're not allowed to get outside of our house and we're trying to stay in to help lessen uh, the spread of the virus. But the biggest question for most Americans right now is where's all the toilet paper? So if I were to sum it up in one image, of what's been going on in the United States with this pandemic and this whole panic. It definitely is the missing toilet paper. So for today's video, out of this studio as my first project, we are gonna make a stained glass missing toilet paper roll in today's video. Well, let's start with a fresh toilet paper roll. Of course, one of the finest from Costco. Okay, so what I wanna do is make a side profile drawing and then I also want to have some of the paper trailing down so this seems like the classic toilet paper drawing that you're gonna see. But the only problem I have now is I won't be able to make this hole. I do not have a way to put a hole into the glass. So we're gonna have to break this up somehow. But let's try to draw it up and get some ideas. So let's do something like that. But now I've gotta break this up somehow. It's not so bad. This way. I think this one works a lot better with the lines going up and down versus going left and right. Wait, let's maybe, let's try something. Let's try another one. Squiggly or straight one? Mm. Yeah, let's go with the straight one. Okay, let's just make this one a full size toilet paper. from the cabinet. I'm guessing we're going with white. All right guys, I have everything here that's basically all in white. So I think I'm just gonna start tracing and cutting some glass and see how they fit and if the colors make sense. <sighs> Finally, get to cut something. Okay, so here's what we need. We have our glass cutter and we have our grosing pliers, and then we have the running pliers, one of the central tools that you're gonna need. Let's go with this long side first. Bam. It looks a little bit thin right here, so I don't know if it's gonna break cleanly. Ah, dang it. Okay, um, so now we use the grosing pliers. You can grip it pull down and away and there's two points here that are pretty sharp so we're gonna file that down We've got a carborundum stone and you can just kind of you can just file it lightly take it down just a bit So when it gets down to it, if it's too close to the edge, it's not gonna break cleanly. So give yourself some room and then you should be able to break a lot better. We'll use the grosing pliers again. I'm just gonna grip it, pull it off like that. Okay, I don't know what happened. I'm guessing the glass was already cracked uh, to begin with because I wasn't even pushing in that direction. So guys, somehow, sometimes it happens. Uh, I have no idea what happened there. Maybe I pressed too hard on it. It just broke in that way. I'm not too sure, uh, but let's get another glass. Okay, let's try that again. So let's try something like this. Here we go. It's like half cracked from here to about the midway point. So try to crack on this side, see what happens. Oh, that 
was a nice one. Check that out. That's some crazy break. Again, it just kind of cracked from this first half. Okay. I think I'm going to use the grossing pliers for this one, I'm trying to just grip it and pull it apart, pull it out of the glass. There we go. Nice. Let's try the same thing. All right, it's kind of uh, looking okay. You can see I'm trying really hard to not have to get out the glass grinder. So if it looks okay, you could use the carborundum stone and just file down some of those jagged points. All right, guys, I think I have a problem here with the matching up of the pieces. Uh, these two aren't lining up as nicely as they should be. As you can see, the one on the right is a little bit more open than the left side, and they don't really match up. So I think I'm going to redo this and uh, try it again. failed again as you can see that took off way too much right there so damn it all right got a new one and we'll do the outsides first too bad. Let's leave that for now. Now what I propose to do is instead of cutting it and trying to break it inside, we'll use the grossing pliers and take away some of this material and then it's probably safest to use the glass grinder. I was really trying not to have to use it, but for this, I'd rather not keep breaking the glass and just get it set up and we can do it properly. All right, before I start chomping away with this, don't forget, wear some safety glasses. It's good for you. And yes, there's glass flying everywhere, so don't do this in your living room. All right, I think I'm close enough. I don't want to mess with it anymore and we'll use the glass grinder to clean up the rest. And we'll do the same on this side. And we'll leave this one as well for the grinder. All right, much better. Let's keep moving on. And I'm gonna use this iridescent. Don't know if you can see that. This iridescent piece will go with number six and number five, just for the heck of it. I think we're good. I'm gonna clean up and get set up for the grinder. Still works. It's matching up really nice right now. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be very close. It should line up nicely. The better you do it, of course, the better it's gonna look. Let's get in here on this channel.
The grinder is kind of fun. We'll rinse this off and dry for the next step. So I have here the copper foil tape. This one in particular is the 7 30 seconds of an inch width and also in the silver backing. And then we have our fid tool. This will help burnish all the copper foil onto the glass. And then we have our scissors just to cut the tape. So let's start by applying this onto the glass itself. So I like to fold it over just to help it maintain, uh, stay on the tape. And take your time on this, make sure it is nice and even. And this will give you nice and straight lines when you're going to do the soldering. And then as you come around to the end, just do a slight overlap and clip it off. And then you use your fit tool, take that and slab it over. And now what you can do is just help fold all the foil down on the sides. And I'm leaving the corners. And then I use my fit tool to kind of scrape it in and really press it firmly in. You're really just folding one over on top of the other. It just goes right over nice and easy. If it gets too thick, you can cut the corners. Otherwise, if it looks clean, just leave it. All right guys, we're all ready now and set up for the soldering. Let's start with the soldering station. This is an old soldering machine that I've got from many years back. It's got temperature control so you can vary the heat. I keep mine at about 700 to 750 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm using the quarter inch tip for the soldering iron. Also, I should mention that I've upgraded to this brass uh, cleaning wire. So you can clean your tip a lot easier than with a wet sponge. It does a better job of cleaning in my opinion. And I've got this flux that we're gonna be using, this liquid flux. I also got a brand new brush, so why not? And then our solder, this is the 60-40 type. You can pull it out and kind of form it. So when it sits down, the solder is just kind of floating. It helps when you just have only two hands. And I wear the gloves to keep flux off my fingers. Some people don't like it and think that the solder will burn through the gloves and then onto your hands. If the solder melts and gets on your hands, yeah, it's gonna hurt. So if you're uncomfortable with it, don't wear latex, wear heat resistant gloves. Um, then you can work with it that way. I feel that those gloves are a little bit thicker and I won't be able to pick up my pieces um, as well while I'm soldering. So it's up to you, be safe and understand uh, what you need and what makes sense to you. But also solder doesn't really drip onto your hands if it's on this surface. So unless you're picking this up, solder should be falling down onto the glass and not on your fingers. And lastly, I wear this mask to keep all the solder fumes away. Since you're pretty much putting your face right directly into the glass as you're soldering, and so all these fumes are coming out and you shouldn't be breathing them. This one has a filter. You absolutely cannot smell the fumes at all. So I like this one. I've been using it for a while now and it's been great. So we want to tack these pieces together. Let's add some flux. Just do a little spot right there. Just a little bit dab onto the soldering iron. And I like the positioning of my piece right now. So I'll hold those together and do a little drop just like that. So cleaning is pretty easy. We're gonna use CJ's flux remover. So just a little bit of it with some water. And I might add, it's also environmentally safe, so very nice product. Let's go rinse this off. So you guys, check it out. I messed up on something here. These two pieces, if you remember, were iridescent. Only one of them right now is showing that because I had flipped this center piece backwards. Uh, it's kind of hard to see, but the iridescent now is on this side of the glass. Such a rookie mistake. So before you guys solder everything together, make sure your glass pieces are turned the correct way, facing the correct side that you want your final piece to be. Definitely don't do what I did and reverse your glass. Nonetheless, it is still fine um, because if you turn it the other way, you'll get it on this side as well. So I think that's not entirely a deal breaker, but if I were selling this, obviously I would not send it out. So learn from my mistake, make sure everything is on the correct side 
and then solder away. So now what I'd like to do is polish everything with Leva's stained glass polish. To me, this gives a really nice shine for the silver solder. So I like to use this when I'm doing anything in the silver color. Just grab it all over. This will give you the best shine coming out of your solder. You can see all that black gunk just coming off of it. So if you don't do this, then all this stuff is still stuck in the solder and it's not gonna give you this super nice shine. All right, we'll let that sit and we'll buff it off. Let's find some chain for this thing. Let's buff this out. It's like a chrome. See all that shine now? Super nice. Hey, I hope you had a good time with this one. I wanna say thank you so much uh, for subscribing and also liking and commenting on my videos. But seriously, be safe out there and please, please leave some toilet paper for the rest of us.